Madman coming back to you guys today with another Warframe tutorial video. Today is potentially one of the more difficult videos to try to get across, and that's because today we're going to be focusing on Warframe modding, specifically modding out your Warframe. Currently, I have uh, Valbon here equipped to kind of give you a base idea of where and how to start in the modding process. Um, it is going to be a little bit longer probably, but that's because I believe that the breakdown needs to be thorough because modding is one of those things in this game that is very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Very in depth. And if you don't have a good spot for it, then our base for it then you're not gonna you're not gonna understand and that's that's not good so we're gonna break everything down in a little bit uh of parts so the first thing you're gonna want to do is take your warframe and come back here to the arsenal click your button i am playing on console as specified we are playing with valbon and that's because i don't have anything special in him so getting the point across is going to be a little bit easier for you to understand. You'll go into the upgrade screen and it will bring this very weird screen up. Now, we're gonna break this all down in detail. Please do not worry. The first thing you'll notice here is there are eight slots right here, an Aura slot here, and then eventually you will have the Exilus slot when you get to that here. We'll do a video on attachments and whatnot later, but that's here. This is also your arcane slots. You should have access to those out of the gate, but don't worry about those. As a brand new Tenno, you are not going to need those. First thing we're gonna focus on here is your capacity. As you'll see here, I have a 19 out of 19 capacity, which means that due to my mastery rank, which is mastery rank 19, you have 19 mod capacity to start with. And that's what you can build out of. Now, if you're brand new and you're say MR one or two, you're gonna have one or two uh, capacity out the gate. The higher your MR, the more you can mod out a frame right out of the rip. So that's, that's kind of nice. Then from there, you can increase this capacity. We'll get into more of that here in a little bit. Um, when we explain what you do post level 30, which is the cap for all of your frames. But for now, let's focus on this window right here. This, this big window right here that's underneath it. I'm gonna break down each one of these things in the stat block so that you have an idea of what each of them do. First is gonna be your armor, which is damage mitigation. This reduces health right off the top. Base armor for your frame is gonna depend on what you have. Like this one here is base reduction of 33 and a third percent. The higher that armor, the more damage reduction you're gonna have. But please note that there is a bit of a soft cap. So even though this number could be like 1200, doesn't necessarily need to be 1200. Every frame has a soft cap. You need to experiment with it and play with it a little bit to figure out what that soft cap is. The next piece here is energy. This is the basically, oops, I, I went down too far. Energy is your mana for those of you that are RPG-esque uh, individuals. Basically, energy is what's used to cast abilities. Uh, you can pick up energy orbs to replenish it, all that. The higher this number is, the more that you can spam abilities and effectively use those. Some frames are definitely more suited for higher energy cost or higher energy builds. More on that in builds later on. But for right now, that's what you need to know is that's what energy does. Health is kind of self-explanatory. That's your life essence, duh. Then you have shield, which is your overshield. There's two bars in Warframe, your red health shield and your blue energy shield, basically and your shield, the higher this number kind of dictates how much 
over shield or how much base damage you can take before your life gets affected. As you'll read here, shields absorb damage except for toxin. Depleted shields grant a moment of invulnerability. Damage interrupts recharge. So the shield recharges on its own. There are mods to speed up that recharge as well as mods to increase the shield size. Then you've got sprint speed, which explains how fast your Warframe moves. Every frame is gonna have all of these. Every base frame is gonna have all five of these stat blocks. Sprint speed, shield, health, energy, armor, all that's gonna be the same. Now, some frames are gonna have a little bit different here, but 99% of them are gonna have the next four abilities as well, which is duration, efficiency, range, and strength. Duration is going to be the duration of the ability and the energy cost of toggled abilities. Basically, um, what it is, is if you have an ability that consumes energy on a constant basis, then they're increasing the duration percentage, taking it above 100 will allow it to last longer. Taking it below 100 uh, will cause it to last less long. Then you have efficiency, which is the amount of energy to uh, the, the way the best way to explain this, because there's a lot of math involved in Warframe. Efficiency is the amount of energy that you consume to cast abilities. The higher above that percentage of 100, the better off you're going to be because it means it's going to take less energy to cast abilities. Next up, we have range, which is the modify, which is the range of your abilities. Basically, AOE effects, stuff like that. Uh, this kind of explains how far it can go. And then last, we have strength. Strength is pretty self explanatory, but it basically modifies how strong an ability is. So these four are gonna be the four that you primarily focus on when building a frame out in a certain direction. That's because the more a number is, like the more, the higher above a hundred something is, the better off it's going to be. Now the issue that you're gonna run into is that if you put a hundred percent or say 150% in strength, you're gonna lose something somewhere else. It's just gonna happen. That is the nature of how this game is designed. You, you, you give one to take away another. Um, and I'll show you a couple of builds uh, where we've done that later on. But for now, just know that when you're building out frames, what's going to happen is you're going to run into one of these numbers being higher, one of these numbers being lower. And to remember that anything above 100 in a lot of cases is better for that particular stat anything below 100 is negative for that stat so next up i want to focus on mods that you should focus on early in the game the first thing i want to point out here is if you look at the bottom whether you're on pc or console there's an actions button press the button that brings up that actions button and you're going to see this thing right here automatically set up your mod configuration. Now I'm gonna do this real quick and I'm gonna show you what it does. Click this button. It's going to put in what it believes is the best mods on that frame. And you'll see over here, when you throw a mod in, it updates the stat blocks in real time. So you have the health bar, shield bar upgrade, as well as the duration and the range upgrade. Both of those things are really, I mean, they've, they've been affected by these mods. So please note that when you first start, auto install is a great idea. Auto install is a fantastic idea that really does have a good place here in Warframe. But as you get further in the game and learn more about the game and how the game works, then manual install is going to be better because you're going to want to build things a certain way. So now let's talk about some mods that are worth focusing on early on. Now it's funny because this actually pulled up a couple of those. So the first one 
is going to be Vitality. You're going to see here, if you go down to the bottom and press the corresponding button for search, you type in Vitality or Vital, it'll bring up Vitality. Now at base, it's 40% to health. I have this one maxed out, but look at what it does. So right now my base health is 100, throw it on, I get 140. So, so Vitality is one of those that I feel every frame should have when you first start building because it's gonna give you more life. The next mod, there's four of them total. The next one is Redirection, which is funny because again, it's right here that's going to increase your shield capacity. Again, if you go in and search, redirect. Notice I've done a little bit of preempting here. Um, that's gonna give you 40% shield capacity at base, 440% shield capacity when maxed all the way out, just like Vitality. So that gives you extra shield capacity and extra health. The next set of, or the next mod I would recommend is gonna be Flow. Now, Flow is a rare mod, but you're gonna pick it up pretty quick. Flow is energy max. So Flow's base is gonna be 25% energy max. If you go all the way maxed out, it's 150% energy max. So let's see what happens when I put that on. You'll see my energy went from 150 to 375. The so flow is the third mod that I feel you should really pick up and work on. The last is another common mod, and that is Steel Fiber. Steel Fiber is an armor mod. Now, again, I have a maxed out version of these. You'll probably have this one to start with, Flawed. Now, if you get a Flawed mod, it's okay to use those to start with, but as soon as you get the Unflawed mod, you'll see the difference looking at the two of these. I didn't even realize I still had a Flawed Steel Fiber, but so initially it's 10% armor, and then you can max it out, it's 110% armor. Whereas this one starts out at eight and only has three slots. Do not upgrade Flawed mods, just don't do it. But let's throw the steel fiber on there and boom, our armor, which started at 33% is now 315, still only 33 and third percent. So the higher that number though, the better. Um, let's, to, to give you an idea, you probably won't have, uh, you probably won't have, oh, I don't have one. Okay, never mind. I thought I had a prime steel charge, but the higher that number, the more that, that cap will go up. Um, so those are the four that I think you need to focus on. Flow, Vitality, Redirection, and Steel Fiber, because that's going to give you survivability early on in the game. Uh, the last thing in this particular section is you want to make sure that the mods line up with the correct polarized slots. Now, in the example of Valbon here, if you notice these little symbols here, right? they correspond with symbols down here. If you take this and put it in here, you'll notice down here at the bottom it says 11 right there. Put it up here, it will actually only cost me six. So if you correctly line it up with the, with the right polarized slot, it's going to cut it in half. If you take it and put it in the wrong slot, it's gonna add to it. So it went from 11 to 14, and then if you put it in a regular slot, it's just gonna cost 11. This is another part of building that we'll get a little bit into here in just a little bit earlier in the video or later in the video, but just be aware that when you line these up, you wanna make sure any chance you can line the corresponding mod school, in this case, Metari, up with the corresponding polarity on the slot. And then I've already talked about the search function, but know that you can search through mods as you get more. If you know one specifically you're looking for, such as steel fiber, type in steel and go to all, and it will show you all the mods you have with that particular name in it. Just something to remember. Now, once you hit 30, then the question becomes, what do you do? So, so now the question is, what do you do once you hit level 30, which is the cap for the level of all Warframes and 
weapons. Well, well, let me explain to you a few things that you can do to kind of help double this capacity. And I say wait till 30 for Warframes for a couple of reasons. One, you want to make sure that you like the frame and how it plays. You want to make sure that you are able to understand how it functions and that you don't invest what I'm about to show you into a lot of frames that you just won't ever use again. Um, so the first thing, if you hit this actions button again, you'll see the upgrade button right here. This will double your mod capacity. So once you hit 30, your capacity will be 30. If you install an Orkin reactor, which is this thing right here, you will bump it up to 60. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you is don't do this in a lot of base frames. Not all base frames, but a there's a majority of prime frames, which in short are better versions of the regular Warframes. Don't go investing Orican reactors into base frames because you just don't need to. You can get prime frames that are going to have better stats at base, and then you can just upgrade those. The next thing is if you have an Aura mod, which is the things I was talking about here, make sure it's installed. You can do this before 30, but let me show you what that does. If you take an Aura mod, and there's a bunch of them, I don't think I even have all of them, but if you take a an Aura mod, let's say enemy radar, notice how its polarity matches up, light turns green up there, click it, immediately doubles my mod capacity. Now. If you have an Aura mod that you want to use that does not line up, like so let's say Physique doesn't line up, but Physique gives you maximum health increased, pop it in here. You're still going to get a buff, but you're not going to get as big of a buff. Notice that the number here, which in this case is 5, correlates to the number here, which means that's how much extra capacity you get. So basically, if you line them up, let me show you the let me show you this one again, this energy siphon one again. This gives me an additional 14. So I have an additional 14 mod capacity right here. You can do that once you get into, uh, you know, you could do that once you get Aura, Aura, Aura mods. So just keep an eye out for Aura mods to help builds uh, be a little more efficient. And even if you don't like the necessary Aura mods, it's going to give you more capacity for the actual build down here. Once you master the frame and decide that you want to build it into something, you want to start looking for mods that focus on the four aspects I mentioned here. The duration, efficiency, range, and strength. Those are going to be the way that a lot of these are built. There are some frames that are going to be more focused on energy, health, or shield. A lot of them aren't focused on armor. Armor, like I said, has a soft cap. So once you figure out what that cap is and you know how much mitigation you're going to get out of whatever that number ends up being, then you can proceed from there. That's uh, builds are very unique and I'm not going to go into them super in depth because every frame has at least three ways. In my opinion, they can be viably built. So because of that, I would 100% recommend Look it up a build uh, on a website, and I will post the website in the description below, but it is overframe.gg. I use that for a lot of frame building. And, and another piece of advice here, just, and I understand if you're watching this and you're new, but once you get into building, do, do me a favor. Don't worry about building your own frame right out of the gate. I've been playing this game for over six years and I just kind of came to grips with the idea that I can use uh, a build site like Overframe. And I've built some pretty, pretty good frames that way. So that's just something to remember. Um, whatever you build for, build for your play style. Make sure that the frame and the build is to your play style because you don't want somebody you, you don't want to support frame when you're more of a dps player you don't want a dps or a tank frame when you're more of a support player if you're that utility player that can bounce in between then by all means grab a frame test it out really kind of feel it out and, and go from there make sure that you mod accordingly once you learn what they do 
so that way you can figure out how you want to play that frame. That's just something to keep in keep in the back of your mind as you level up a frame. Overall, the art of building a Warframe, it comes down to preference. And once you develop that, as you learn to play the game and you start choosing frames that kind of fit your play style, you'll start to figure out what your play style is in this game and what mods work for certain play styles. Uh, it has a ton of build systems and it allows you to create a ton of variations on the same frame, which is why we're not doing build here. Um, it's it's insane how you can take a, a frame like Vauban and myself, Chris P2K5, Nakunata, and Bishop could all build it completely different because we just we like certain play styles and certain things line up that way. Um, the next video we do, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna break down primary and secondary weapons. We're gonna break down this screen and that. And the reason we're doing two different videos is because they are very different in how the stat block reads and how certain mods affect it. So if you're liking what we're doing, do me a favor, click the like button, hit that subscribe button, make sure that you are um, right there and ready to go for the next one. And I appreciate you guys coming along for this. And until your next journey into the void, I am the madman reminding you to be safe along the enemies of the origin system.